from a hole in the ice to weird celebration. These are the weirdest moments in NHL history. And first, the time one mascot had enough of two lovebirds. out on your girlfriend. But for number 19, Magnus Payarvi almost broke his back with the strangest celebration ever. Payarvi bats it out the air and then what a celebration. We're not going to see that at all on sports. I don't know what Magnus was thinking, but I have no idea what number 18 was doing either. Because one second he's squaring up and the next. Now he comes back. Whee! <laughs> Sorry, but we know what happened there. Yikes, bro was not ready to walk the walk, but this fan on the other hand was forced to. Cause at number 17, one fan took it so hard, you gotta wonder if bro has an OnlyFans. I had to feed that out, but got tipped on a play by happen to see you. God damn, that's really unlucky. But when it comes to weird moments, it's hard beating this ref. Cause in a matchup between the Pittsburgh Penguins and the Philadelphia Flyers, Latong scored one of the easiest goals in his career. That's when the referee decided to confuse the whole stadium. The puck here with an empty net. In front, Latang, he scores. Chris Latang seals the deal for the Penguins, an empty netter. They're gonna take a look at it right at center. They are indeed looking at this and they're gonna call it a goal as Latang had the leg behind the stick. We got no goal, distinct kicking motion. No goal, mm -hmm. guys. Oh, distinct, distinct kicking, kicking motion. motion. So they're going to say Latang kicked this puck in. He's going, still looking at it. And they just called no goal on the ice. After calling it a goal. Here they have another decision. After review, the puck was deliberately kicked in. We got no goal. Mm -hmm. Okay. One more decision here, guys. Just listen up. No distinct kicking motion. Good goal. Good goal. Now they're calling it a good goal, no distinct kicking motion, so. Not once, not twice, but four times? This ref clearly knows how to rile up fans. Just like Patrick Stefan at our 15th weirdest moment. First run, fans on a pass. Stefan steals and he'll ice it. What? I thought that only happened in NHL 24. That's hella embarrassing. But that's not as embarrassing as Keith Ballard. Because one second he's defending his goalie, the next he's trying to murder him. Oh my god. Bro broke his teammates here. But that's not the weirdest interaction between teammates. Power play of 28 ranked. Power play, you see the. Oh, damn. Bro gave him his full load. But if there's one person who can take it, it's Kaborik. Because one second he's one on one with Hasek, and the next he's airborne. Look out. Hachi, come out. Oh, yeah, right, right over top of Dom. All right, now, we've reached our top 10 weirdest moments in NHL history. So, you know, we have to take it to a whole new level. And what better way to start than with the weirdest shootout goal in NHL history? Don't come in. Yeah, that's got to go down as the smartest move ever. But anyways, this next moment will definitely have you scratching your head. You see this goalie? Yeah, that's Frederick Anderson, a Danish goalie that currently plays for the Carolina Hurricanes. But he's not just your ordinary goalie. After some research, it's clear to us that something was off. See, Frederick is currently included in the top eight scores in NHL history. And the weird part is he's number 10 on the list. That's just ridiculous. But this next goalkeeper is known for having a different relationship with his goalposts. I mean, we can all agree on one thing. Hockey goalies are a different breed. Standing voluntarily to try and block a puck being shot at you at speeds over 100 miles per hour? That's a different type of insanity. But there are some that take it even further. Meet Mark andre Fleury, a one-of-a-kind goalie. See, his love life with his post is something not a lot of people knew about. Until a matchup between the Pittsburgh Penguins and Washington Capitals. Yeah, Ro literally started flirting with his post in the middle of the game. But at least he didn't destroy the Stanley Cup trophy, like our seventh weirdest
proudest moment. See, back in 1991, the Pittsburgh Penguins secured their first ever Stanley Cup win, but something was off. See, while celebrating, Phil Bork started shaking the trophy, and that's when he knew shit was off. And just like your boy, his curiosity got the best of him, and he started to take the whole damn trophy apart. And that's when he found the weirdest and most confusing items ever. A subscribe button? Nah. Jokes aside, it turns out two guys before Bork took the trophy apart and engraved their own damn names inside the trophy. That's actually hilarious. And that's exactly what Bork thought also, since he also engraved his name next to theirs. Now making history can be cool and all, but one team made that shit embarrassing. See, back in 2020, the NHL had their own Detroit Pistons, but by the name Buffalo Sabres. The 2021 season was far from easy. From COVID hitting to all the shit going on around the world, but it didn't make life much easier being a Sabres fan. But their season was full of weird coincidences. From Rasmus Ristolainen being hit with issues from COVID, and then head coach Ralph Kruger testing positive, it felt like the world was against the Sabres. But the weirdest coincidence of all was that Taylor Hill from nowhere looked like he'd never played hockey in his life. Bro literally had his worst shooting percentage ever in his career. But I mean, we can't blame it all on weird coincidences. They were complete ass as well. But at least they didn't concede the weirdest goal in NHL history. Seed right on, and Monsenbo's got that. There was no whistle. What happened there? I was fooled. Everybody was fooled. The Lightning I thought this was a stop. My God, man. But at number four, the stadium was turned into a zoo. And um, sorry about the ass quality. That's all I could find. I don't think I'd ever, and I mean ever, would see a damn chicken chilling on the ice in the middle of the game. That's freaking wild, man. But what's even wilder is Kellen Lane. See, back in 2014, the Vancouver Canucks made a crazy move for a 25-year-old undrafted forward. And to make things even crazier, he was actually going to make his debut against the Calgary Flames. But what was supposed to be a dream for the 25-year-old quickly turned into a nightmare. Because Kellen Lane wasn't known for his hockey ability, but more so for his fighting ability. I mean, he literally spent 129 minutes in the sin bin that season alone. But that wasn't going to phase Kellen. He wanted to make his homeboys proud. So he invited his whole family and all his friends to come watch him make his debut. That's when this happened. Tortorella at the Vancouver bench is already looking at the and here we go. Line brawl to start this game. Welcome to the NHL, Kellen Lane. Handling himself really well, too, considering his opponent. Oh my god. Dude literally played for two seconds on his debut. Right now, we've entered the top three weirdest moments of all time. And what a better way to start than the weirdest fan experience in NHL history. See, back in 2016, the former Philly owner, Ed Schneider, was given a tribute by the organization. And they did so by handing every fan a light to have a beautiful light show. But when the game started, things weren't looking as bright because the Capitals were hitting the Flyers harder than I hit Latinas. I mean, even the announcer had to try and stop the fans. Hold those wristbands in your hands. Show some players here. This is Philly. Hell, even Ovenchkin and Simmons tried getting the fans to calm down. I mean, one fan even hit Dmitry Orlov in the head. Yikes, man. Flyer fans took it way too far. And so did Eric Cole. Because one second he's scoring, and next he's confirming that the refs are under his payroll? That right there takes a lot of balls. Just like our number one moment likes balls too. Precisely four of them. See, not only are Sergei Fedorov and Palve Burr two of the greatest Russian talents to reach the NHL, they also have a deep, dark secret that not a lot of people know about. When it comes to their playing, Fedorov went on to play for the Red Wings, while Burr took his talent to Vancouver. However, somewhere down the line, these two started mixing up their love life. This girl right here, that's Anna Kornikova, a former Russian tennis player. At the age of 17, she had the Riz to catch Fedorov on a string. And let's just say that wasn't the only string she was playing. Because even though she was going to every Red Wings game, she was also flirting with someone over in Vancouver. Yeah, this is turning into some weird love triangle. And you best believe Kornikova actually managed to convince both Fedorov and Burr, two NHL stars, to ask her to marry them. Yeah, she was playing the Uno reverse card. I can't I can't believe Burr and Fedorov even allowed that shit. But in the end, Sergei Fedorov took the prize, if that's what you want to call it. I mean, if it was today's day and age, she would probably eventually be on OF as well. But who am I to judge? There's someone much more important who's judging you. Oh my god, he's looking at you! No! Quick, press the subscribe button!
what an oriole take! 